What we do here matters, because what we don't do matters even more. We need to continue to push, and we at ADAO are going to continue to push the Surgeon General of the United States. As you know, the United States continues to use asbestos, and that indeed is a barrier to others stopping its use. The most horrific part of this whole story is that it is preventable. I want to spend a few minutes today getting you caught up. I want to talk about the global asbestos struggle. Yes, global asbestos struggle. I want, to, I want to review the progress and the challenges that we've seen just in this last 12 months. That being said, as before, that ADAO is dedicated to education. We build educational graphics and disseminate them around the world. And just recently, we had gentlemen in, in London who lives in Zimbabwe asked to have them translated in three African dialects. This home diagram helps us, for who are not members of EIA and under, readily understand where asbestos might be in our homes, we can guide people to a thought of where it might be. Pipes, boilers, garage, roofing, siding, cement. Those kinds of places that might increase awareness doesn't mean it's an absolute that it is there, but it'll raise knowledge and understanding. I think this quote for me is very strong. We are about advocacy. We are not, as I said, paid lobbyists. But we take our message to the Hill, and we discuss what's important in our asbestos victims community. We're not submissive victims, but it's, there's only one word that I can use in a five-minute te congressional testimony that describes those exposed, those diagnosed, our families, and the decedents le left behind. This quote came from a mesothelioma patient, Rachel. I hope she's watching online. I'm afraid to breathe on what lung I have left. She had an EPP, quite telling for a young woman. And yes, it's about our stories, whether you see them in this book or you read them online. It's through our storytelling that we can advance awareness. As Dr. Selikoff once said, statistics are just numbers, are people without tears. And it's true. If we don't share our stories and sometimes tears, our message is lost. Let's get going. We know the only two ways to end asbestos-caused diseases is prevention or cure. That's correct. Right now, it is only prevention. I won't make you read a laborious slide for those who know my slides. I don't usually do this. But I think it's important, as Dr. Lemon said, there's a century of knowledge out there. F beginning in 1907, on down, and we have Dr. Dole and Wagner and Selikoff. These people have known the correlation between asbestos exposure and disease. Most importantly, the United States, as Richard said, has not banned asbestos, and worse yet, we continue to import the, the deadly dust. I want you to take a look at the slide because we're thinking global. And on this slide, you'll see the type, top five producing countries. Yes, Russian, over a million tons a year. R China, Brazil, Kazakhstan, and thanks to some great movement in Canada and around the world, obviously they've closed their mine as of last, last year. But the U.S. isn't exempt from this, this graph. Why on earth are we still importing asbestos? And I bet if I caught you in the bar and asked if you thought we were importing asbestos, most of you would shake your head no. We'll be talking more about this later on. But you can see we import over 1,000 tons annually. Why? To meet manufacturing needs. That's wrong. That's propaganda. That's a lie. There are substitutes that do exist, and the United States need to em embrace change and use them. We know that the chloralkaline industry and the roofing industry rely on asbestos-containing products. Unacceptable. And in California, our last mine closed in 2002. I'm shocked. Simple facts. If you look at these three, obviously we haven't banned asbestos. 10,000 Americans die every year, and construction workers are 11 times more likely to develop mesothelioma than others. Consumer environmental and occupational exposure continues. But let's look at the progress and the challenges that we've all embraced during this year. In April of last year, we were able to screen this great film, Dust, The Great Asbestos Trial. And Fernanda and others were there. This film has gone on to be screened around the world and actually win awards. It's a powerful movie. 
We have the insulators in here, and Terry and Andy, could you stand, please? This union has done more for their workers than any other union I know in Washington, D.C. They in May, yes. Thank you. In May, they, they convened about 50 experts for an amazing conference in Washington to work on awareness, outreach, tissue bank, and a cure for their members. But it's a model for other unions to also follow. We celebrated in May when the Chrysotel Institute closed, didn't we? But don't be fooled. They just have a shop right over there in Virginia with we have their address. Celeste, who we all dearly love, we worked on a story for about two months. These workers were asked to do repairs in the city of Houston. The pipes contained 35% chrysotile. Unacceptable, illegal, criminal. Fernanda has been nothing but gracious with ADIO, and she invited me to join them in Brazil for the, at the Rio Summit for the People Summit, and we were able to do a workshop, which was quite powerful. And along with that visit, I actually toured where they actually make a, a new product for substitutes, and we saw how those new products are manufactured. So it is possible in the United States. It is affordable. Don't be fooled and drink the Kool-Aid. Well, we love to go to Washington and, and see our friends and make new ones, and sometimes have honest and hard-hitting conversation with those who may not be our friends. But we actually able, were able to do two congressional uh, staff briefings last year, in January and in July. And you can see Barbie McQueen there, and Brent, and Richard, and Arthur was in the one in January, and Barry, of course, and Herman, and Doug. So it's been a really wonderful opportunity. We buried a dear friend, Larry Davis, in July. He couldn't accept his award last year at our conference. He was too sick. He lost his courageous fight. But all of us here today can help Larry and the other Larrys by sharing what you learned today. Well, the Supreme Court in Brazil is obviously convening, and Fernanda will share more on a, constitu on a, on a constitutionality challenge. But I want you to know that people around the, United around the world, look at the US. What we do here matters because what we don't do matters even more. The indus asbestos industry experts use the fact that the United States has not banned asbestos to sell propaganda and lies. I sat in that courtroom. I was ashamed when the asbestos industry used the fact, well, it's chrysotile, not so deadly, and the United States hasn't banned it either. We need to do more. We must do more. Some of my EIA friends, we toured the uh, Jeffrey Mine, um, and it did close in September. It's one mine, we're excited, yes, but Russia and other countries need to follow suit. We have an amazing expert from Australia here, Jeff Ferry, is gonna be talking about what they've done in Australia to basically build a campaign for an asbestos-free Australia by 2030. We can, the United States can learn from many of our partners. With sadness, Hurricane Sandy hit, and I remember being at APHA with Dr. Miller, wondering what on earth are we gonna do? First, it, it's search and rescue and trying to get medical care for people. But we all knew there that there would be hazardous debris removal. How do we get the education to those homeowners? Devastated, no phone, cut off. We can do better, we must do more. Andiva was nothing but gracious, and I hope they're watching online. They invited Dr. Lemon, Dr. Castleman, myself to come out for an academic conference followed by a demonstration where thousands of people filled the streets in Paris. The message is the same. We want a global band. We want this to end. Devil's Dust, screened in November. It is a, a tale that uh, many of you may remember Matt Peacock. His book inspired this TV movie series. And Karen Banton, that is her uh, a, a portrayal of Bernie Banton in this film. A strong voice, a voice that will be remembered. You'll hear more on Sunday. Well, this has been a firestorm. And when you, uh, with social media and transparency, we all want it, we crave it, and we demand it. So when IARC sends a representative to a conference in Kiev for the Chrysotel Institute, we find that unacceptable. We find that wrong. But we also know that we learn along the way. And this has been caused quite a stir in the scientific community, and we're hoping to move this across. And I know that probably Richard and Arthur and uh, Dr. Demirs will also speak about this. Well, for those of you who read the news in Ohio, and that's probably my least favorite uh, EPA district, Region 5 is my least favorite EPA district. They want to change laws all the time, and that's wrong. 
Now, these students were exposed to asbestos, nearly 40, to do YMCA cleanup. Three dumpsters of debris were, were collected. These students didn't know and did work. In the UK, you can't have students do abatement. Christine will tell you more. Well, we celebrated last year at our conference in Los Angeles. The Italians got a victory. We joined in in solidarity. Dr. Castleman gave compelling testimony, and Fernand and others were there. But as we expected, this, there's now an appeal of this verdict, and I know that Barry and Fernanda will also share more. Here is our resolution once again to note that in April, or excuse me, in March, this was unanimously passed by the Senate. Where does that bring us? It brings us in just a few days that we'll be celebrating Global Asbestos Awareness Week. And I look forward to each of you, each of you, finding a point to share about awareness, education, and maybe advocacy with your colleagues. And that being said, Doug Larkin and I have uh, issued a media advisory and we'll be holding a press conference. We have information, we have proof that U.S. investment companies, mutual funds, have been investing in asbestos mining and manufacturing. We think that's wrong, but we really want people to understand the correlation between time and money and toxic trade. So we'll be explaining this to the media on Monday with the evidence that we've had consulted by attorneys that it's appropriate to share and we look forward to advancing that message. Without further ado,